everybody, it's Cameron with Speed Tech Performance and today I'm back in the shop, so excuse the noise, but we are here with the next segment of our A-Body build. In the last episode, we finished up the welding of the, of the frame brace kit and sent it off to powder coat and now we're ready to assemble the front suspension. For the stock A-Body chassis, we do offer a couple different options for the front suspension. With this project, we decided to use our Rotosalt kit. Now our Rotosalt kit comes with the hybrid coilover, a pin style coilover from our friends at Viking. It is double adjustable and then this kit also includes our tubular control arms. One of the great things about this kit is there is no cutting, grinding, welding or anything like that. So basically if you can disassemble your stock suspension, this is going to be something very easy for you to then reassemble at home in your garage. Now, as I mentioned, with this kit, there's no cutting, grinding, welding, or anything like that. So as you take your lower control arm and put it in the stock location, you may notice that it's a little tight or it may not even fit up there at all. And that's probably because somewhere over the last 50 years of the life of this chassis, someone's over tightened the bolts. So we have outlined how to cope with that in our instruction manual. We have the lower control arm installed and as you can see it took a little bit of manhandling but with Tom's help we were able to get this in. So we've got the bolt in and the stover nut started and we're going to go ahead and not tighten it down for ease of installation. If you decide to you can because the way that we've designed that part of the control arm with that sleeve that I pointed out earlier that's actually where the clamping point of the nut and bolt is and so the delrin freely moves over that so you would be able to go ahead and move your control arm without a problem. Which also means you don't have to tighten it all up at ride height. You can do it up in the air or wherever it's easiest for you to reach that point. The next step in this project is to install the spring in the shock. But before you do that, you're gonna to wanna to apply a decent amount of NICs to the body of the shock and then move this nut up and down so that it's nice and evenly, evenly coated through the threads. And again, don't be shy with the application of this NICs because when you go to adjust your ride height, this is only going to help you. So like I said, take this lower jam nut and just run it up and down in the threads. That way it's nice and evenly coated. So now that I've got NICs, a decent amount here, especially in the middle part of the threads on the shock body. Yeah, I didn't put any on the lower part, but honestly, you're never going to run a spring that low anyway, so you really don't need it. But if you look here, at least when we go ahead and set our right height adjustment, we've got enough to go up or down from where we're at. So with our Rotosalt kit, like I mentioned, it does have this hybrid coilover from Viking. And with this product, they go ahead and give you all new hardware, including the bushings. And some of you guys might ask, what is a hybrid coilover? So basically the spring goes ahead and sits on this perch um, instead of down into the arm like a stock setup. So with this setup again from Viking, it is a double adjustable shock so you can tune your compression and rebound. Hang it from the top then, not the bottom.
The Rotostop kit has been designed to use a stock spindle, but also it will accept our ATS forged aluminum spindle. If down the road you want to upgrade to that, just give us a call. So once we have the spindle just kind of loosely installed as well, again, we're not tightening anything until we have it all put together. It's time for the upper control arm. Now, as you can see, again, super strong tubular control arm design. We do have our stainless steel cross shaft here, grease zerks, all the works here to uh, keep you down the road running strong. Now, one thing that I do want to point out with our upper control arms before I go ahead and install this, so if you look at our cross shaft, there's only one side that's machined completely flat. If you mount that facing out, that's going to give you less initial camber, or we have the other side that's not machined completely flat, and if you put that to the outside, that's going to give you more initial camber. So the way that we're going to install it is with more initial camber, so again, the side that's not machined all the way flat is going to be facing the outside. So another thing that I do also want to point out is you can actually use your factory shims for alignment. The best practice is to put them back how you pull them off of your stock setup. And then once you get it to the alignment shop, whether, whether it's you doing it in your garage or you're taking it to an actual shop, the adjustments can be made. Last step after you have this ran down with the shims in is to go ahead and just drop this into the upper ball joint into the spindle and then move on to the other side. That pretty much wraps up the installation of the road assault kit on this stock A-body chassis from here. There are still a couple things that we have to do, like check some of the hardware, uh, torque a few things down, um, install the sway bar, but what we showed you is pretty much the full installation process. I do want to give a quick shout out and thank you to our friends over at Viking Performance. They stepped up in a big way on this project for us. It's a product that we've used for years and years and we know the quality that it is. So again, thank you so much for helping us out. Yeah.